Uh, thanks for coming. I think they saved the best for last. Uh, just joking. Um, thanks for staying late. Um, my name is Manoj Pillai. I work for the Red Hat Performance Engineering team. And the talk is on exploring the uh, performance limits of CephFS in Nautilus. Right? And just, just as a background, uh, until recently, I was working with the other Red Hat software defined storage project cluster, uh, moved pretty much full time to Ceph recently. And uh, in the process, something that I wanted to do was uh, some of the performance issues that we had uh, faced in the, in the last few years, some of the approaches that worked well in, in um, sort of identifying bottlenecks and things like that. As a first step moving to Ceph, I wanted to apply some of those um, here and see what comes out and sort of engage with the community uh, starting with that, right? So, so for instance, um, last year at FOSDEM, we did a talk on optimizing cluster for NVMe storage. And, and you've heard about uh, Crimson and CSTAR and, and some of those um, problems are there in Ceph as well. Um, and, and some of those issues in, in, in that context, uh, we saw that it was one of the big bottlenecks that were not solved was the RPC layer bottlenecks. Right? So, so the, the, uh, the ability of the RPC layer to keep up with NVMe, right? So the NVMe kind of levels of performance, that was one issue. Uh, one of the other things that users frequently report when working with uh, distributed file systems is not so much the, you know, pumping of IOPS into the system, it's, it's more around everyday admin activities like you know, if someone's running a tar command or an untar command or, or a find command on, on these large data sets and the time that it takes, right? Um, so uh, you know, I, I wanted to sort of uh, look at uh, 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 some of those things. And, and basically, this is more of a sort of what are the areas of improvement kind of talk. So it's a little bit more uh, developer centric, not so much of realistic user centric scenarios. And it helps to identify the bottlenecks I've seen if you're working with simpler configurations, right? So if you, if you have a simple configuration, you know. So one way of, of looking at the efficiency of a system is, uh, of, a, of a software defined storage system is, what is the hardware capable of delivering versus what is the software running on top of that actually delivering to you, right? So and those kinds of back of the envelope calculations are much easier to uh, do if you have, if you're working with simpler configurations. So uh, that's one of the reasons why uh, you will see, you know, very, not, not a lot of um, OSDs and not a lot large scale systems, but in, in smaller configurations, what are the limits that we are bumping up against, right? And again, um, so if you, if you want to focus on the software limits, you want to run on hardware that is, that is high end. Like, so for instance, if you're running on spinners and you know, a spinner is limited to 150 IOPS or something, and so you will not detect problems that are there in your software layer when you're doing that. So essentially, we are trying to look at a, a lot of what we will do, not all of it, but a lot of what we'll do will focus on um, sort of what the hardware can deliver versus what we can uh, get from it. Right? And in terms of um, the tools, a lot of you probably know Ceph and the CephFS architecture uh, better than me. Uh, but basically, CephFS has got a metadata path where, you know, to the metadata server. And then you have the, the basic IO path to the, to which is similar across other, other solutions to the radars, right? And uh, this, uh, in my initial thing, I was trying to run through all the scenarios, not just specifically that test this FFS path, but sort of more of a complete picture. So we have FIO, which does large file sequential and random IO uh, testing and what you can get out of that. Uh, this actually does not uh, stress the metadata path of CephFS so much, but it is whatever you find here are probably common across other uh, protocols in, in Ceph, right? The, the block and, and um, so on. Um, there is a s small file tool. FIO is good for large file sequential IO, IOPS, uh, that kind of testing. 
uh, when you are dealing with large numbers of small files, there is a tool called Small File, which is written by Ben England from uh, the Red Hat Performance Engineering team again. And I'm using that to look at some of the small file uh, performance issues. And that's good for you know, multi-threaded create, read performance of small files. But uh, I'm combining that again with some of the, like I said, some of the common commands that uh, administrators and users often run on these uh, you know, um, data sets and uh, the performance that we, that we see there. And um, there is something that I was developing as, as part of this exercise, uh, Dimmer, which is just a harness for running these benchmarks and when they are running, collecting all the stats and, and the system information and all that. Um, if you want more details on how some, of, if you want to browse through more details on how some of these tests are written and things like that, you can refer to that. The link is uh, over there. Right. And so, like I said, for, uh, as far as the hardware configuration is concerned, uh, I'm focusing on um, you know fast NVMe drives, 25 gigabit Ethernet, and fairly high-end um, high-end uh, uh, CPUs. And uh, the, the harness that I was talking about, it's basically mostly self-independent. Um, you know, it, it works on a, on, a, on a standard mount. And by substitute, if you unmount Ceph, mount, create a XFS file system on the, on, the, on the local NVMe drive, mount it, and run the same test, you get a sense of, you can actually measure, instead of relying on uh, manufacturer specs, what the, what the hardware is actually capable of, right? So when you run those kinds of tests on the NVMe hardware that we have, a single drive is capable of, on a 4K random write, you know, 400K IOPS, um, double that on 4K random read. So there is a lot of performance potential uh, here, right? So in sequential write in the slightly north of two gigabytes per second and sequential read uh, slightly above five gigabytes per second is what I uh, measured on some of these same tests that I'm running here. Um, and you know, this is just just to give a sense. I'm not going to spend time on this or, or the for the FIO testing. What are the job files that we that I'm using? It's basically uh, Sync IO engine for the sequential. Uh, so these tests have got a sequential write phase, which basically creates the files, and then you have the sequential read and the random read and the random write, which are operating on those files and and the uh, files. Different jobs are connected by the file name format so that the one next test uh, reads from the files that are there uh, previously. Right? And for the random I.O. case, you have uh, direct I.O. based tests based on Libe I.O. Uh, block size of 4K, like I said. Right? And for the small file data sets, um, you have the initial phase, the data set is created with the small file create file, uh, create command operation, which is multi-threaded. Right, so you can increase the number of uh, threads, and even when you have high latency in your in your uh, configuration, you can still get good throughput by increasing the number of thread uh, number of threads. Right, so once that is done, the the read phase is again uh, from the small file command itself. It's multi-threaded uh, again. So, but but some of the commands that I run after that, um, these are all single. Um, single threaded command standard utilities that and 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 that's one of the reason why these are problematic for distributed file systems right so so it's it's a sort of a one two punch um, these commands are single threaded which means that you know the performance or the time taken to complete is primarily dictated by latency and distributed file systems have got you know the network latency is is inherent in the file system so uh, because of that, they tend to run slower on distributed file systems. But at the same time, when you're talking about scale-out storage systems, people tend to put a lot of data into these into these solutions, right? Just because of the nature of the of the solution, you you want to scale out to beyond what a, a single file system, a single local file system, is capable of doing. And and the time taken for most of these depends on the size of the data set is, itself, right? So so both of those factors. Uh, and like I said, in the past, we have seen some users complaining and, uh, about, about performance of this, and I wanted to get a sense of what do you expect from CephFS in this, um, for these uh, kind of tests. Right. 
so a very simple test here uh, where you have you know, three Ceph, FS, three Ceph nodes, uh, one NVMe on each, uh, replica three, uh, with a single client mount not co-located with the Ceph uh, nodes. This is uh, the Ceph kernel client, by the way. And uh, I'm looking at here what you can get from that single mount. So, so if you have a single SFFS mount, what is the sequential I/O performance that I can get from it? Right. So, what is the upper limit, and how does that compare to what uh, the hardware is capable of providing, and and what may be not an apples to apples comparison, but some other distributed file system is capable of providing? Right. So, the blue bar is there is what you get out of SFFS, which is slightly above what you would get with a 10 gigabit ethernet or, or uh, in that range right so if you if you ran this with 10 gigabit uh, ethernet you would believe that cephfs is basically or in that case cephfs would probably um, you know give you what the hardware is capable of giving because that that's what a 10 gig uh, ethernet is giving you but in in this case since we are running on 25 gigabit ethernet you can see that there's a gap between what you could provide versus what you uh, what you are get, what the hardware could provide versus what you are getting right and again uh, when i say what the hardware can deliver uh, it's difficult obviously for a distributed file system to match latency of an nvme drive right but uh, potentially at least uh, things like iops and throughput which can increase with by just by pumping more load into the system Right, so I'm trying to see whether you can match that or not. Um, so with some tuning, so so the, this is with the default uh, configuration. With some tuning, if you if you increase, uh, CephFS has got a read ahead size parameter, which is by default set to eight megabytes. And if you are really aggressive with that, you can basically get the um, read bar to match or slightly exceed what the kernel NFS uh, is providing. So in the, in the case, this is not an apples to apples comparison in the sense that in the case of kernel NFS, there is, again, it's going over the network. There is one NVMe drive on which an XFS file system is created and exported, and you're accessing it over, over the network, right? Uh, so the replication is absent. Uh, so there, there are those kinds of things. But uh, potentially, at least on read, because you have three NVMe drives, um, CFFS could be delivering more, more performance. But um, so in terms of what you could, could get on the right test, it's basically, like I said, the NVMe is capable of about two gigabytes per second on the right test. Um, so that is kind of an upper limit on what you can get here. Uh, we are getting somewhat uh, more than half of that. Uh, similarly, on, on uh, the read test, because it's the client is is separate. Uh, basically, the client network is 25 gigabit Ethernet, so that limits the performance that you can get from the system. So it's about uh, upward of 2.5 gigabytes per second is what you could potentially get, close to three gigabytes per second, uh, and this is what we are actually getting. Right? Um, okay, and and again by by tuning some of the the. Uh, Test parameters, like so. In this case, you have four FIO jobs. By increasing the number of jobs, uh, you can get the CFFS performance to about 1600, 1700 uh, megabytes per second. Um, so, this is slightly different test. So, so clearly, so in this case. You know, you're not able to deliver what the hardware is capable of delivering, but uh, so I wanted to get a sense of what, whether we can get a sense of uh, the bottleneck is on the client side or whether it's on the, on the Ceph node side, right? So variation of the test with one, two, and three clients. So in this case, I don't have enough uh, systems to do, put all the clients on, on separate uh, or no, not co-located with the Ceph nodes. So these mounts are actually co-located on the Ceph nodes. Um, so we are varying the number of clients and also going from three um, Ceph nodes to six Ceph nodes, or three OSDs to six OSDs, right? And some of these these tests, um, I am seeing that there is a lot of run-to-run -run variation in these. So on the later tests, I sort of uh, I started putting the ranges that we are observed, and some of these in some of these cases you have a large large variation that you can see, right? So but basically. Um, 
on the sequential write test in a number of scenarios, um, you know, CephFS is able to deliver about three-fourths of what the hardware is capable of delivering, up to 75%, roughly. Um, and, you know, with, with, so if you look at the one client, six uh, Ceph nodes, again, with, more, with, with some more aggressive, uh, more number of jobs, I'm able to bump this up to about um, uh, three-fourths of, of what the, or, so, sorry, on the three clients case, so three-fourths of what the hardware is capable of delivering. So uh, there appears to be a per, uh, on, you know, there is there is some limitation on the client side as well, and there is some on the on the OSD side as well. Right? And and on the sequential read test, similarly, um, I'm varying the number of clients, varying the number of OSDs, and and seeing the what what I can get. And on the first row, at least, and seeing really. Good scalability as you go uh, from one client to three clients. It's almost linear scalability, right? So, so that means that, um, you know, so for at least partly the bottleneck is on the client side. Probably on on the uh, how much the client can pump I/O over the network. And and we have seen um, a number of talks today about some of these uh, bottlenecks and what the developers are doing to fix this. Um, again, the, the picture is a little bit muddled because of so much of the, of the run-to-run variation, but basically you can get a lot of IOPS. It's, it's uh, on you know, Nautilus uh, without even much tuning, but it's just that the ratio of what you can get versus what the hardware is capable of delivering, there is a big gap here, right? So, so when you talk about six uh, OSDs, each capable of delivering 800K IOPS, the aggregate IOPS that the hardware is capable of delivering is, is very high. And while the number that you get out of Ceph is, is uh, pretty good, uh, when you compare it to what the hardware is capable of delivering, it's still short, right? So, and, and these tests, uh, if you look at the job files earlier, uh, they are set up with a, with a very high queue depth, right? So, um, you know, uh, if, if there are no bottlenecks in, bottlenecks in the software, they are able to flood a lot of requests and potentially should be able to get good IOPS even in the face of um, high latency. The random write performance is the one that uh, where I think the gap shows up more most in terms of so for for instance from a three OSD uh, group I'm able to get about fourteen to fifteen k IOPS max right compared to, to 400K that each um, OSD is capable of delivering. So these are uh, bottlenecks in the, uh, especially the IOPS bottlenecks, you must have heard multiple talks where people are uh, aware of these bottlenecks and, and, and they're working on that. Uh, and like I said, uh, these are not tests that stress the CephFS path specifically, right? But some of these small file tests, um, they are they they stress the CephFS um, metadata paths more, um, so it's a combination of uh, CephFS metadata and, and and data paths. And what we are seeing here, um, so again, so in this comparison, um, again, it's difficult to get an apples to apples comparison because the solutions are quite different. But I have included some of these results just so you get a sense of, um, you know, what. You know, just a ballpark figure of you know, is it doing well? Is it not doing well? And in this particular graph, um, I've normalized the results so that you get a sense of how these solutions are doing relative to each other. And and basically, Ceph, CephFS uh, on a single mount versus kernel NFS version three, version four, and an XFS local file system. So you would expect that XFS local file system will outperform um, by a lot, and that's okay. We just want to get a sense of uh, what these things are doing. And, and like I said, the create phase is multi-threaded. Um, on the read phase, you are seeing pretty good performance with four jobs compared to some of the other solutions, distributed solutions. Um, and so this is relative to each other or relative to Ceph, and you can see the actual times taken in this graph here, right? So this is, um, so, if, so even though the, the, the find name and the find size commands, they are basically uh, variations of find running on the whole data set. Uh, name would basically just 
uh, require you to look at the directory entries. Uh, size is something that requires the attributes of the file, requires you to look at the attributes of the file. So these are two different flavors, but with Reader Plus, uh, most of these file systems will uh, sort of give you the same result on this. Right? And, and all of these are doing actually quite well on the find commands, right? So this is a pure metadata path uh, operation, right? So nothing, nothing goes on the, uh, no, there's no stress on the data path. And uh, even though when you look at the numbers here, you see a big difference, they are, in terms of the actual time taken, they are uh, quite okay. Uh, the concern for CephFS might be in the, in the, in the create uh, and in the um, RM commands, right? So, Sorry, those, those are uh, the two where, um, like I said, some partly what I'm trying to do is trying to figure out where to focus or some of the, uh, or so, so to come up with some of the focus areas for driving performance improvements. And those are two things that look like, um, you know, where we see a big difference between the solutions. Um, so, <clears throat> So these tests are with four jobs, and uh, they are indicating that latency is a factor in the relatively poor performance of, of Ceph, right? Uh, by the way, this is time, so higher is worse, lower is better. Uh, and that's okay. Sometimes even if it's a high latency, you can increase the number of, uh, or the degree of concurrency in the workload and still get uh, and still see whether you can get good performance or good throughput or not, right? And um, what happens in this case when you, when you do that on CephFS is that you seem to hit a plateau fairly quickly, right? So, so in this case, we are going with, um, so here, again, I'm switched to throughput on the y-axis instead of time, so higher is better in this case. So we are starting with the four threads, uh, small file create command that was there in the previous graph. And what I'm looking at is as you increase the number of threads, right, so how much you can um, go in terms of the megabytes per second that you can get here, right? And, uh, you know, with read, you can get about 500 some odd megabytes per second uh, on a single mount before you hit some kind of a, of, of a limit. Uh, on write, it's much lower. It's about 128 megabytes per second, or 125 to 130 megabytes per second. So the question is, what is it that is limiting the performance here, right? So if you take a look at um, sort of some of the stats that come in as part of these runs, uh, if you look at the at, at a Ceph node, a, a proc view, so this is with one MDS, right? So, uh, and the MDS is, co-located with the Ceph uh, OSD node. So if you, you see on that particular node, you see that both of them seem to be working equally hard, right? So the Ceph OSD percentage CPU utilization uh, and the Ceph MDS percentage utilization is, is, is almost the same on the create phase, right? But when you look at a thread level view of, of what is happening, there doesn't seem to be an obvious bottleneck as far as, you know, one thread is, is maxed out or anything like that. Um, on the read, um, on the small file read phase, uh, it seems to be mostly stressing this FMD, Ceph MDS. And again, on the um, Ceph node, on, on the thread level view of, of what is happening there, there isn't any obvious saturation of any of the threads. Right? And, and in some of these threads, um, particularly on the random um, I.O. Um, workload that I, the FIO random I.O. test, the messenger thread I've seen uh, go up to the high 90s, right? So that is probably one of the contributing factors for the, for the uh, performance issues. And also the, the load distribution between the uh, messenger threads was, was not even, right? So as the obvious thing to try here is to increase the number of uh, MDS and see what that has, what if impact that has. And in this case, uh, in going from one MDS to two MDS resulted in immediate improvement in performance. Um, I saw almost double the throughput with two active MDSs compared to one, uh, but, and, and 
the tests were showing a little bit of instability, and that has to do with the, the tool that I'm using. But uh, it's definitely uh, the MDS that was the bottleneck in um, the earlier tests, right? But that's still a concern here, because um, if you look at the maximum throughput you can get uh, from a single mount or, or with one MDS, uh, it's, like I said, it's about 125 to 130 megabytes per second, right? So if you wanted one gigabytes per second of small file create throughput, you would need to have, if, if the slide that I just showed you about multiple active MDS that, that holds true, you would still need to have eight MDSs, which seems to be a lot. So um, this, is, this is not just about the, the, the way you configure Ceph, but we, probably something that we need to look at there. So maybe there's some tuning that I'm not aware of that will um, you know, um, help us bump the, uh, the what one MDS can deliver beyond, beyond the limits that we are seeing now, or maybe there are some fixes that need to be done. So, um, so we'll have to look at that. But the immediate bottleneck in these tests, uh, I am seeing that is, that is the uh, MDS. Um, right, so, so again, in the, in the previous project, which was a Fuse-based uh, file system, we, we are running into issues like um, when, you, when you ran, pro, when you, when you ran um, workloads like Postgres PG Bench, right? So there were uh, problems with the solution not being able to re use the cache effectively, right? So for instance, the Fuse does some things like auto-invalidation of uh, caches, and, and because of that, uh, the performance on some of those workloads were, were not that good. So one of the things that I wanted to do as part of that is, and probably others have done this as well, is look at the caching effectiveness of um, the solution, right? So for instance, if you're doing reads and writes, uh, is, the, is the client able to effectively cache the data or not, or is it invalidating it in some situations and things like that? And on both the uh, kernel and the Fuse client, I was seeing that that is not the case. So there is not a whole lot to report there. I mean, I, I don't see any problems. Uh, CephFS Fuse, is, is anybody using CephFS Fuse for any actual performance kind of use case? Show of hands? No. So um, yeah, the caching effectiveness is good, but there are a bunch of, um, on pretty much all of these workloads, what CephFS Fuse could deliver was, was uh, uh, fairly poor in terms of performance, especially compared to the uh, Ceph kernel client. Right? Um, there is another investigation that is under progress. I don't have that completely wrapped up. Basically, uh, we were talking to the Kimu guys earlier in, in the context of another project, and they have one Kimu thread uh, doing libAIO and basically submitting AIOs. And uh, the argument was that since it's libAIO, you don't need to have more threads, right? And, and we saw one other case in which that ran into a problem. Um, you know, uh, we were seeing that that particular mode or, or libAIO, maybe the implementation of libAIO was not efficient enough, that um, that was not the case. So if you had, if you're doing one thread, doing all the submissions versus multiple threads, there was a big performance difference. And in the case of CephFS, um, I did see a drop uh, when you have a single thread doing libAIO compared to multiple threads, uh, but I need to get some of the, the I, I need to dig a little bit more before I, I uh, wrap that up. Um, okay, so that's the data I have. So basically, um, in terms of next steps for, uh, from this, the IOPS limitations of Ceph seem to be fairly well understood in the community. Um, you know, the, like I said, the, the C star uh, Crimson projects, there is a lot of effort uh, going in there. Um, I would probably want to focus on the MDS and, and its scalability in, 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 in the, the performance limits that you can get from MDS and whether there are any potential tunings that we can investigate or potential fixes that we can look at to basically be able to uh, increase the, the throughput that, uh, that we can get from a single MDS on some of these workloads. Right? So that would be one of the focus areas uh, going into. 
going forward. Questions? Yes. Let me see if I have. Size of one uh, CFFS with the size of one compared to KNFS and um, yeah, um, it's a good point. I mean, there's no good reason I could have done that. Okay. So um, yeah, so if you have any um, clarification that you like on any of any of the data, just you could you could send me an email. Um, thank you very much for attending. <laughs>